Hello everybody, my name is Shara D and I'm going to be a, doing an overdue of Blender's user preferences today. Okay, so when you open Blender, you're gonna have this default scene and you're gonna have a cube, a camera, and a light. We're gonna go ahead and expand these out so you can see everything that's going on over here. We're not really gonna be using this today, but we will go to user preferences and we're going to go ahead and set up the user preferences so we don't have to worry about that anymore. Okay, this, I didn't, I don't think I changed anything on this. You can leave this as is, you can change it, whatever. Um, that's based, everything here is based on perspective. So if you wanna do something that I say, well, feel free, feel free. If not, then, you know, don't stress yourself. Don't worry about it. Everybody learns in different ways and different processes and everything this one I did not change either at all I actually added material texture material and texture to this duplicate data area so that whenever you know you duplicate something it will duplicate the materials and textures I just found out about that a few moments ago so I hope it'll work later I'll let you know if it does or not or if you know um, checking that was useless input you don't really i don't think you mess with anything here everything's basically all set up for you um over here however it depends on how you like to navigate the scene i use the left clicker a lot of people like the right um if you don't know uh if you're starting up and you're like using the right and you're very frustrated then just go ahead and click the left of course, you can go back to right whenever you want. Um, but again, it's all based on perspective. So if you like right, you go with right. If you like left, go with left. I did emulate number pad, number pad because I am using a laptop and I don't have a number pad. My numbers are at the top of the QWERTY keyboard. So I need to, I needed to click that. My orbit style is turntable. If I'm not mistaken, I think it starts at trackball. It might not, I'm not sure. I like the turntable better, so when I spin it, it looks like a little turntable. Um, so with the zoom style, you can do dolly, you can do continue, or you can do scale. I like dolly. I'm not sure what the default was, but I know I kept it on that. Um, view navigation, you can walk or fly. I didn't mess with anything else down here, not really. Um, with the rotation style I kept it at trackball add-ons you don't oh yeah you actually do need to click some of this so um, you're gonna click the 3d navigation copy attributes menu you're going to go with displays tools dynamic context menu modifier tools screencast sculpt paint brush menus and of course as I'm going along with this if you see where I am at like right here 3d view then you can just come over here and just select the ones as I'm talking um, so that you can just follow along and as I'm going down you see it goes into add curve and then you can just get these and just go like that if you prefer if you prefer to scroll down with me then you know that's on you that's up to you um, you can go to add curve simply tree gen add curves, simplify curves, add mesh, ant landscape, archi mesh, archi pack. So um, sampling tree gen, of course, is, you know, if you're adding trees, simplify curves is simplifying curves you add. I'm not 100% sure what that does. I haven't, I don't think I've used many curves. So I'm still new to that one. Ant landscape, archi mesh, and archi pack are basically default for landscapes and architecture ant landscape it'll help you you can create mountains and stuff like that archi mesh and archi pack you have default um i think the archi mesh are the defaults for doors roofs walls homes stuff like that archi pack is you can add your own and um, edit them as you go along I prefer to use ArchiPack most of the time unless I'm making a roof or something, which I just use ArchiMesh. I could be getting those confused. Let me know if I'm wrong. And let's move on. Okay, so we got animation. Of course, again, you can follow if you want. 
in animation, you want to turn on mocap tools. So that's, you know, motion capture. If you have something moving, say you have a live scene or something, something you recorded, and you want to attach a character to the body parts that are moving and you want to use mocap or whatever, you can do that. Uh, you can also, I'm not sure if this one has the facial rig on here. I will find that out and let you know, or you can let me know in the comments below. Um, you can add camera rigs, you can do dolly, you can do a crane. Of course, you go down here, you click this little arrow button here and you have a little description and it tells you who it's made by, everything you need to know. Um, it, some of these have this enable auto run Python scripts. We'll get to that in just a few moments. You have a turnaround camera. You can, you know, spin the camera around whatever object you have. You have Manuel Bastioni Lab and the APL, API Navigator. Now this Manuel Bastioni Lab was an external um, add-on that I had added um, by Manuel Bastioni. It was a open source free um, character creation software, but in as of January, I believe, it is no longer working. I forgot to turn my phone off. Okay. So then they have the API navigator. Not sure what that does. I just turned it on. I watched another video. It said that was pretty important in the long run. Um, you want to turn on Import and export are the formats that you can import and export to. Um, these help when you are importing and exporting, you know, when you're packing and unpacking the files. Sometimes things can be messed up. Blender File Utils helps with that. FBX, import images as plain. So that means that when the imports come in, they're going to be put on a flat plane instead of, say, a cube or something like that. And that helps you... Um, when you're doing UV texturing. You have this STL format, scalable vector graphics, San Stanford ply format, PLY format, UV layout, wavefront OBJ format, web 3D, X3D, VRML2 format. Now typically with importing and exporting I just use wavefront, the OBJ and the FBX. Sometimes I use the UV um, when I'm exporting UV, um, textures. Okay. And here in the mesh section, we're going to click edit tools two, F2, inset polygon and loop tools. This is basically just helping your mesh whenever you're in edit mode or not in edit mode. It helps, um, so loop tools is when you're modeling into a polygon. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I've used that a couple of times, but it was kind of a instinct to use it. I'm not really sure what they're used for. Um, F2 makes an edge or face. So um, you say you're in edit mode and you want to add a face, then all you do is press F or F2. And this one is edit tools, extra mesh edit tools, modifying mesh edit selections, yada, yada, yada. And you know, you have this little hotkeys here so you can see what hotkeys hot that you can use. Actually, let's click that now. Okay, so this is the hotkeys for the edit tools, not just the blender hotkeys. Node wranglers in the nodes is when you're adding realistic textures or complex textures, say you want something shining or something like that, you're gonna go into cycles and you're going to use Node Wrangler. I'm not sure if the Node Wrangler can be used in Blender Render, but I will either let you know or you can let me know in the comments below. Object, we have Cell Fracture, Cell Fracture Crack It, and Fracture Tools, that helps when you're trying to crack an object or, um, you know, explode an object or something like that. It just helps with the cracks and the fractures and it helps them look very clean and like they're, like they're supposed to basically. Skinify rig, not sure what that's used for, but you want to use that whenever you're rigging because if you don't use it, some funky stuff happens with the characters. 
paint palettes. It's, you know, when you're in paint mode, in weight mode, then you can change the color. Um, any kind of mode, actually, any kind of painting mode, then you can change the color of whatever you're painting. Um, copy settings, render settings. So say you're in this scene here and you have another scene and you want to export, you want to copy the cube to the next scene without having to import it and export it all over again. So you're just going to press control C or command C and you're going to press command V or con control V in the next scene and it'll just copy it over and it'll do it properly if you have this checked. Cycles render engine, that is the one that I was telling you about with that uses the nodes. It's a powerful um, engine and you probably want to use it if you're doing more realistic stuff. If not, then you should be fine with Blender Render if um, you want more complex looking stuff. Cycles is where you want to go. Rigging, we have Rigify. It helps with the um, the bones that you put onto whatever character or whatever you're rigging. Mm, UV textures, bake UV textures to vertex colors. This is when you're in cycles, or I guess you can do it in Blender Render 2. It basically just puts the texture on there as a default. Well, not as a default. It bakes the textures on. I don't know any other word to use it. And um, it kind of comes permanently attached to the mesh or the object or whatever you're using. And instead of it taking forever to keep rendering and rendering and rendering it's already set to that setting so you don't need to keep doing it texture atlas is the images that you use so that is it for add-ons and let's move on to themes of course you can change the theme i was going to change this to like purple and you can change anything you want here basically so this is changing that you don't have to you know it's all depending on you so what's this one changing oh this one's changing down here selected items that's pretty cool so we're going to go ahead and turn it back down to gray or turn it to a darker gray like that and we're going to go to file. This is if you have a project and you want to keep it in order, then you're just going to, you know, have it on here and you're going to set your export file. So you can go here and you can export it to whatever you need to export it to. Um, you can do it for fonts, textures, render output, scripts, sounds, temp, render cache, anything that you need to basically. And this is what I was telling you about in the add-ons when it has the little warning button and it tells you enable auto run python scripts and user preferences file i'm going to go back to file and this is what you're going to want to click on to make sure that um some of your add-ons work correctly um other than putting auto run python on i'm not sure if i changed anything else you want to have relative paths on here it helps you know keep everything neat and tidy over here I didn't change anything except this cycles compute device so you can have it on none I have a Mac so that's automatically CPU um, I don't have an external GPU or anything like that I don't have a new Mac it's like a 2016 uh, version so it's not very high processing but you know we still have everything that we need However, it does have a GPU um, alternative, I would say. So if you go over to your render settings over here, it's going to have a section where it says which device that you want to use. And it's going to say GPU or CPU. If you have this clicked on, then you can use either CPU or GPU. Sometimes it runs faster with CPU. Sometimes it runs faster with GPU. I'm not really sure which is what. It just depends on, you know, if you're in cycles, the textures that you're using. Um, that is it for the preferences. And of course you're going to want to go ahead and press save user preference set it, use, uh, save user settings and press exit and everything will be saved. You want to go ahead and save it. 
when you save it, you'll have a little pop-up box. You want to save it to where you want to save it. You don't really have to mess with anything that will pop up over in this area. Just, you know, just go ahead and save it as it is. Unless you want to compress it, then you can go ahead and press compress file. I don't know if there's going to be extra settings after that, but, um, you know, just, just play around with the stuff and see how it works for you. Let me know if anything... Um, if you had anything checked in the add-ons or if you know anything that I didn't cover. Um, that is going to be it for this one. And the next one, I think we'll go ahead and do an overview of all of this. Just so you know how to navigate. Because it does get kind of complicated and it helps to know everything before we actually get started. So, it's a... So thank you for listening to this tutorial and I hope to be back with another one. Thanks.